Hello there, Cancers. So I, I'm seeing like the back of him. He's riding this horse and there's like a small trail. So he's in the middle just riding. And he comes into this clearing in the land. So this is more like a medieval landscape. There aren't a lot of houses. And the area is not densely populated at all. Okay, so he's coming into this clearing in this worn out road. And on the, the left side is a, is a pond. And there are a bunch of beautiful women just bathing in the pond. So he comes across... <laughs> He comes across this pond and he's shocked, but he doesn't really avert his eyes. He's looking at the women bathing in the pond and um, none of them are noticing him. Like they're, they're, you know, playing in the water, bathing, gossiping, and they're not really noticing him. So that's where it, it, everything just stops. So what this is telling me is, um, you know, I, I feel like in conjunction with the spread that's laid out, there's a lot of passionate, playful, sexual energy that is coming into the picture. And I almost feel like you guys are getting your mojo back. That's what it feels like to me. It's like there could be the beginning of a, a new love, a beginning of a crush. Um, feeling a, a sense of you know how you 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 work you either are friends with someone or you work with someone and then you always see them as a friend or you always see them as a co-worker or a colleague and so the romantic ambiance just never cross your mind and then something very minor would happen where you start to spend a lot of time with them and then you start to see them in a different light and then the next time you notice it and it makes you feel like, wait a minute, you know, I could potentially date this person. I think I like this person. So I feel like it's a very gradual, slow process where you start to develop feelings, like romantic feelings for a person. Um, I'm seeing this potentially in a work environment where you're starting to feel a certain way about somebody. You're excited. You can't wait to get to work. Um, and, you know, you have a little bit of a, a pep or a bounce in your step because of this attraction. It's almost like it's an attraction that makes the mundane activities that much more magical because of the other person's presence. That's what it feels like to me. I mean, he's walking along this really, um, it's, it's a road and there's, you know, n nice scenery and nice landscape and he doesn't mind it. And he's, you know, the, the horse is just walking um, at a brisk pace, but it's still walking. It's not galloping. He doesn't have anywhere urgent that he needs to be. Um, and so I feel like, you know, seeing people again, seeing civilization, seeing especially a bunch of beautiful women, it's a refreshing sight. So I definitely feel like you could also be surrounded by a bunch of um, potential suitors, is what I'm seeing, like a lot of potential suitors. Or you're attracted to somebody who, you know, they're, they're really capturing your attention because of the way they look, because of their playful energy, their attractiveness, or things like that, okay? So, stepping away from that image, let me just talk about the other things that are coming up. I do feel um, finances, everything looks really good, okay? So, I'm, I'm not going to, to um, stress too much on that. Uh, if there are issues that come up, then I'll talk about it. But finances looks very stable. I mean, you're at a point where I feel like financially, you're able to afford luxuries. You're able to give, you know, money away, lend money to people that need it. And you're even able to invest in things like the stock market, um, buying and selling. So I feel like, you know, finances looks really stable, looks really good. And I wouldn't say, you know, you're swimming in money, but I feel like you definitely have certain luxury items that you could afford and you have money squared away in the bank account and you have investment opportunities or investment opportunities that you have undertaken that are bearing fruit. Okay. We have here the harvest. We have you feeling very emotionally happy with the Queen of Cups. So the harvest is the seven of pentacles, okay? Uh, waiting for the harvest. So like investment opportunities panning out very beautifully. And we also have you giving up money away as well. So this is a card, six of pentacles, a financial windfall, or even giving assistance to somebody, okay? So I feel like 
finances. It's not anything that I need to worry about. Compared to like last year, you're in a really good space right now. You have built up your financial foundation and things look really stable. Some of you are in a relationship though um, with someone who's a little bit demanding. That's what I'm, I'm feeling. And this person has very strong likes and dislikes. Very strong likes and dislikes. Um, I don't think there's anything bad about them. I'm not getting like a bad stay away type of a vibe. I feel like they know themselves really well. They know what they will or will not do. They like certain types of luxuries. I, and I feel like this is somebody that, you know, um, they, they, they look really nice. They look presentable. They like to dress nice. They like expensive items. They have expensive tastes. And I also feel they have the financial backing to afford these luxury items. And I also feel like you might feel like this person is a little bit more on the frivolous end. You might feel like they're a little bit more materialistic. You might feel like they're a little bit too demanding. Um, I don't see there's anything bad about them. But I feel like they're very financially independent. So it's not like they're, you know, they need anyone to take care of them to buy them nice things. They can do it on their own. And because of that, there are things that they don't tolerate and there are things that they will not do. So, and um, the image that I'm getting is, um, like, you could be at a restaurant with this person and, you know, if, if the food is not done to their liking, they're going to have the waiter send it back, okay? And you guys are very, generally, very, very easygoing. You know, you're not going to cause a scene at a restaurant and just say like, you know what, waiter, I don't like this food. I feel like for you, most of you, most of the Cancerians um, that I've come across, especially, I feel like you're not going to let that it's, it's almost like you're not going to inconvenience, you know, the chef, the waiter, cause a scene, ruin the ambience over something as mild as like, you know, my food is not cooked exactly the way I want. But this is a person who's very picky, okay? They're, they're willing to do that. And so I feel like, you know, they're a little bit difficult to please and they're a little bit fickle and um, they just want things a certain way. So I, I feel like... I feel like they've also done their fair share of the hard work of their struggles in their own lives. So when they expect, when they want certain things, they expect it done a certain way. So, you know, they might have been a waiter in the past. They might have dealt with difficult uh, diners, you know, like patrons. And so they know how to, they, they know that it's not a big deal to ask to send the food back. But either way, I, I feel like you're you're seeing a lot more of this demanding side of this person and I feel almost like you don't agree with it but at the same time I feel like you love this person you care about this person and you're courteous and so you you're not gonna you know call them out on it but I feel like this could be a precursor if this is not addressed, it could be a precursor towards something, towards um, the same situation, for example, could escalate at a later date, like in, a, in two months, in three months' time. So, if you're out in public and you feel like, oh, you know, their behavior is a little bit embarrassing, or I don't want to draw attention to us, uh, how do I talk to this person so that they don't do this next time? Um, wait until you're done and wait until you're in the car and you're going somewhere else or you're in the parking lot and then just tell them, you know, um, I, I wish you wouldn't do that. Okay, and then give them whatever explanation you want. But I feel like what would go really, they're very stubborn. They're very stubborn. So I feel like you have to do more of an emotional appeal with them, okay? So if you were to tell them, you know, if you did that, it's kind of um, an inconvenience to the chef or to the, um, the waiter. They'll tell you, well, you know, I used to wait tables, and that to me is not a big deal. So how do you refute that, right? 
So that's why you have to do an emotional appeal to them. You can just tell them, like, you know, I feel a little bit embarrassed when we draw that much attention to our table, to ourselves when we're in public. So please don't do that next time. They're going to be receptive towards it, okay? Because I know you guys, you're very under the radar. You guys don't like that attention. And um, at the same time, you care about this person. So you don't want to shame them or chastise them. But I feel a deep part of you don't agree with their behavior. And I feel like, you know, it could it, it could also be like family members. It could be friends as well. Um, I'm not feeling a sense of entitlement, though. I just feel like this is a picky person. They're hard to please, but they are very clear about what they want. And so in the work environment, I'm also feeling like there's somebody who is evading their responsibilities. It's almost like um, that work is beneath me. I'm not going to do that. And so they put it off, put it off until somebody else has to do it. And it's always the Cancers and the Virgos that have to, you know, do the dirty work that no one else wants to do because you guys are so courteous. And, you know, you don't mind getting your hands dirty because someone has to do it, right? And um, that's what I'm feeling, feeling. And I feel like in this situation, it's a sense of entitlement. But with the other person, I don't feel like, I just feel like they're picky. But this person is all like, that is beneath me, you know, I'm above all of that, and uh, that's, it's almost like that's peasant's work, I don't want to do that, and that's stemming from a place of entitlement. Um, with relationships in general, there's a new found sense of love and excitement and joy and passion, okay? What I have here is the sun. And this is, you know, two little kids in a field. They don't have a care in the world. They're naked and they're just having fun. They're playing around, exploring. Um, it's like innocently exploring a new relationship, a new love. Exploring, experimenting as well with your sexuality. And getting in touch with, you know, what makes you feel good. Okay, so that could be in love. That could be in life. That could be in whatever avenue. But this is a romantic card. And what I feel is, um, I'm seeing here, um, Earth sign, Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn. Um, I'm also feeling as well, you know, fire energy, Sagittarius, Aries, Leo. Um, you actually have a lot of signs. But what I get with this card is um, wanting to express you know, your, your feelings, your emotion to another person. Um, if you've been keeping it bottled up, you know, close to your chest, not wanting others to look at what's in your cup, not wanting others to know, I feel like the object of your affection needs more of that emotional expression from you. So if it's a crush, they have no idea how you feel about them, okay? They have no idea. And I, I feel that because what we have here is the justice card, which means they feel the same way, but they have no idea. Like, they're not able to look in the mirror. The mirror shows something else than what they're seeing. So if you're wondering, you know, I, if, does this person know that I like them? The answer is no. Should you tell them that you like them? I feel like you definitely should. So this is pretty much the strength card. You know, don't take the easy way out. Express yourself. Um, being able to say what's on your mind and not fear censorship. Being brave, being bold, and making a go towards a situation. So don't be wishy-washy and waver and, you know, um, constantly do this um, back and forth that, that you guys always do. This constant back and forth. Should I or shouldn't I? And then, you know, it's like being very indirect <clears throat> with the object of your affection. Wanting something and then having a very confusing roundabout way of going towards, like zigzagging towards the thing that you want. Be very direct and decisive and go after what you want because I definitely feel there is an, a really, really big major attraction here and um, there's this um, blurring of, of friendship and romantic feelings 
uh, feeling something very deeply for uh, a friend or somebody that you just met, you, you've always had a platonic uh, relationship with, but all of a sudden something is happening this year. Maybe they're single. Maybe they're you know, maybe they they drop that pentacles. They're no longer in a committed relationship, and now they're looking for other options. There is no ring on the fingers, and they're displaying that to you kind of proudly. You know, like look at me, I'm single now. And so I feel like there are signs pointing you towards this person. Um, there are signs pointing you towards this person. You could be in a relationship. They could be single as well. But I feel almost like you might have feelings for them and you're not really acting on it because you might be in another relationship or you have feelings for them but you're not really... And I feel like for some of you, it could be an earth sign, Taurus, Virgo, or Capricorn. Okay? Um, I have all kinds of signs, but that's what it's really lining up with. I also have a Libra with the Justice card and a Leo with the Strength card. So Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn, Libra, Leos. Um, there are just a lot of people in the picture. So I feel like, you know, it, it seems to me like you're looking for people who are a little bit more fun, who don't take themselves as seriously, um, who are, you know... It's like you definitely want someone who is financially uh, independent. You want someone who's emotionally available and emotionally stable. But I feel like you want to explore. You want to, you know, um, kind of like cast a wider net so that you can meet people from all walks of life and see what the best fit for you would be. So I feel like you're stepping out of this sense of timidity and conservatism. Um, possibly some of you dating only you know, the opposite sex, you might be um, experimenting with um, same-sex relationships, for example. And then for others, stepping out of dating people in your <coughs> geographical location or even, you know, exploring with interracial dating or interracial relationships or even stepping out of your comfort zone geographically. Okay, so I feel like it's a really, really good groundbreaking type of a uh, week for you guys. Finances looks really good, like I mentioned. Um, so I feel like, you know, things are just um, really phenomenal. Um, one last thing that I'm going to end this with. I have the Two of Cups and the Two of Pentacles. Juggling two people. So you might even have <clears throat> two people that you are just deciding between and you feel like both of them might be your soulmate. You know, you, it, it's a, almost like you have really strong chemistry with one person, whereas the other person you have really strong passion towards, but lack of compatibility. So whatever that combination might fall, I feel like there are definitely two major, major people that you're contemplating between. And I feel like, I feel, I don't feel like you need to make a choice.